Now, the federal government says the restructuring and transformation of the empire will best an expanded program to reach beneficiaries aged between 18 and 40. Giving a further glimpse into what a restructured empire would look like, the national program manager disclosed that it will accommodate some new programs in education, health, works, agriculture, technology, fashion, entertainment, and other relevant areas of skill acquisition and employability. He asked that to earn the confidence of Nigerians in the expanded program, transparency and accountability will be the benchmark. It's, he said it shall no longer be business as usual. Joining me right now to speak further on the essence of the program and the recent development is a public affairs analyst, Mohammed Abdullahi. Good morning to you, Mohammed. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure. All right, uh, let's start this way. It has been uh, about uh, almost um, seven years or thereabouts since the introduction of the Empire Project. Uh, looking at what it was established to achieve, would you say it has or is still relevant? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, I would say it's still very much relevant. Uh, uh, remember, <clears throat> um, the last ad administration led by the former president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, when he got into office, we had the challenge of uh, several millions of Nigerians being unemployed, uh, particularly the youth. And one of the measures he took as the leader then was to find a means, you know, to absorb this teeming youth into uh, employability. I mean, scheme like uh, the empire was created. If you remember, the empire provided uh, uh, teachers to school, uh, there was end power agriculture and so on and so forth. Hmm. Hello, Mohammed, are you still there? A lot of opportunities, even though most people argued, I mean, critics argued that uh, the condition of service uh, was a bit poor in terms of pay and so on and so forth. And in fact, some of the major challenges that spiraled into this current administration is the fact that uh, even people who worked for several months, probably three, four, five months, we are not paid as well. Mm. But uh, in answering your question correctly, uh, I would say it really served the purpose because it reduced to a larger extent the number of uh, unemployed uh, Nigerians, particularly the youth. Uh, so I think it's still very much relevant and uh, it's something that I feel uh, the government, this current uh, administration should continue. All right. Now, in recent times, just uh, over the weekend, um, there was uh, this talk about corruption in the program, and now there is a call for investigation. How does that hit you? How does that work? Sorry? How do, you how do you react to this recent development uh, for call for investigation and alleged corruption in the program? Yes, um, corruption has been the bane of our country. I mean, the bane of our society in every facet. Um, so it's not um, it's not surprising, really, that um, the empower scheme is also we do with corruption. Uh, I think, in my own opinion, the challenges we face as a nation is the fact that uh, yes, there are programs out there, there are laws out there, there are policies out there but um, they are not properly supervised um, and to some extent uh, apologies even people or agencies who are actually supposed to su supervise some of these schemes are compromised so that is the major challenge so yes um, i'm not really shocked i'm not really surprised that um, the empire scheme is riddled with corruption uh, what i'm glad about is the fact that this current administration is uh, uh, is looking at ways of identifying the loopholes and the challenges so rather than continuing what 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 was just handed over to them um hook line and sinker it seeks to identify review uh and then see where uh the corruption cases are if um there need be for you know prosecutions uh, of those people who, who, who carry out the corruption corruption charges it is important and then if there is if there's also um, the need to overhaul, yeah. I mean, the process of, um, you know, whether application, disbursement of funds, and, you know, also getting feedback from the society. I mean, those people who are engaged, it's also important. Uh, so it's important that um, this current administration check, because we are, we are, if, you, if I'm not, if I'm correct, 
uh, billions of naira uh, being pumped into the Empower scheme. So in that respect, it needed all the scrutiny that it deserves from relevant agencies, particularly the government and even um, individuals and corporate organizations who see something should be able to tell government uh, this is the right thing to do. Uh, so it's important that um, uh, this current government review the entire process. Like I said, application for the empower process, the disbursement. In fact, that is the major thing, the disbursement of funds. Because some of the challenges are, again, in what I read is the fact that, you know, there are so many ghost applications. People are just being paid for not doing, for doing nothing. Yes, I, 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 was, I was even going to ask that you comment on that since uh, you've mentioned it right now. The government is saying that um, it discovered instances of uh, uh, beneficiaries whose participation had lapsed since uh, last year but have remained on and they continue to expect them getting disbursement. You talked about compromises. You also talked about uh, general overhaul. You know, how do we uh, stem uh, all of this occurrences because is it a thing of the application or the thing about the, uh, the those in charge being compromised or just how exactly do we stem that particular type of people getting payment even after their time has um, actually or have actually elapsed? I think um, in my own opinion everything has to be automated. Um, in many instances in our country we still deal with paperwork in this 21st century. It's, it's very sad. Everything has to be automated, and then um, regularly now, I mean gradually, sorry, now, we see the importance of the NIN, I mean, the National Identification Number in Nigeria. It's very important. In fact, most of the things that I do now that requires the NIN, really I impute my NIN number, all my details pop up. So I think the government also should find a way of you know, inculcating this in all of the things that the government does, particularly that has to do with uh, money and, 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 and other policies. So if you do this, you'll be able to checkmate to a larger extent, you know, a lot of these corruption cases and fraudulent activities that goes on. Because uh, like, I, like I said earlier, we still, you know, deal with a lot of um, paperwork, a lot of direct transfers, which is absurd. You know, for instance, I, I see no reason why, um, for instance, even Empower, payment is done by just direct transfer. Yes, you just bring, you just uh, list uh, uh, names of banks or bank numbers and then payment is done uh, hook, line, and sinker. It's wrong. You know, each payment is supposed to be tied to a particular name so that we know who is getting who and where is such money going. You know, it's, it's important that all these reviews are done uh, and not uh, just ordinary paperwork here and there like what we are used to. We need to automate all of our activities in, in this country if we are to move forward and then stem corruption. All right, uh, let's look about uh, look at some of um, the, the changes that are being proposed. Uh, the scheme was created uh, for the unemployed graduates and non-graduates within the ages of 18 and 35. Now, there is uh, some sort of uh, planned expansion in the age limit, I hear, that uh, it has been expanded to about um, 40 years. What exactly do you think about this development? It's, it's, it's a good initiative um, uh, because there are quite a number of people within that age bracket as well that are unemployed or that are underemployed. So I think it's a very good initiative that uh, we are, the, the, the scheme has been expanded to the to, to age 40. Uh, for someone like me, I don't really believe uh, age is a, is, a, is, is a barrier to doing things. Uh, in fact, two days ago, uh, there was a viral post on social media, allow me, if, I may, if you may allow me to digress a bit, of a 70-year-old man, Northerner from Yobe State, that has been inventing things. He's a 70-year-old man. He's never been to a formal school, or he's been, in, he's been an inventor. Uh, so I don't think age is a barrier for anything. So it's, I, I think it's a good initiative by the government to expand it to the first years old uh, age bracket. Like I said, there are many people under within that age bracket that are unemployed or underemployed. So it, it also creates opportunity for them uh, to access, um, uh, uh, you know, the empower in uh, uh, the largest of the empower. So it's a it's a good one by by, by the government, in my opinion. All right. Um, the program was built to prepare young Nigerians for a modern, uh, globalized economy by helping to equip youth with skills and certifications for emerging global markets. 
would you would you say that um, this uh, criterion has been met? Because you talked about uh, money being handed out through um, direct transfers. Uh, have there been any sort of um, monitoring to ensure that um, these monies are actually geared towards uh, what they have been um, disbursed for in the first instance? Yes, there, there has been, but again, um, there has been discrepancies. And that's why I think we're discussing what we're discussing. That's why the current administration is talking about reviewing the process. I mean, reviewing the entire program itself. Uh, I think it's not just only about renaming, because probably the government might want to rename. I've seen something like that somewhere. Uh, but it's not just about renaming. Uh, I think it's all about um, you know, reviewing the entire process like we discussed earlier. So yes, um, uh, it, 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 it's a good initiative if it is properly deployed and it is properly, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, pro the process are quite uh, straightforward. And then another thing that we don't do uh, is the fact that we don't monitor. We don't monitor, we don't, you know, uh, get a kind of feedback on what we do. It's important that government at all levels you know, monitor, you don't just, you know, deploy funds and then uh, uh, give out funds without understanding whether these funds are actually uh, uh, being effective and being deployed appropriately. So I think it's important to answer your question correctly. Yes, we can't say 100% uh, that the, 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 the program has failed in the past seven or six years. No, but I think what needed to be all right. You, okay. Would you say there is um, actually uh, confidence? Um, known is the fact that we needed to uh, channel all of our energy in making sure. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. You. I thought you were there. I, I think, I think, uh, Go ahead. Yeah. I think. I think. I think the the, the, the government needed to channel uh, all energies in ensuring that there is proper monitoring and there is proper accountability uh, yeah. uh, as regards the the, the the entire process of the uh, program. All right, uh, let me just quote what the program manager said when he was giving um, um, a glimpse into what the restructured empire would look like. He said um, uh, it would actually accommodate some new uh, programs, including uh, education, health, works, agriculture, technology, fashion, entertainment, and other relevant areas of skill acquisition and employability. I think it is a good thing uh, because technology has been mentioned because uh, just yesterday I, I attended a program where some uh, a young Nigerian from the diaspora and of course a, a Chinese were actually training young people on how to uh, produce or to design chips that uh, are microconductors or semiconductors rather you know so how far do you really think this would go this new inclusion uh, as far making uh, other aspects of uh, the economy like education health works agriculture and technology how far would all of this uh, go Yes, it's, I think it's a good one uh, because I know from the beginning the Empower program was just limited to agriculture and basically teaching. Most of the people employed were just sent to schools to teach uh, kids. So it's, it's, it's good that it's growing and that's what we want. You know, uh, As a government, it's good that probably they are listening and then they are trying to expand the, uh, the program to other sectors. Education is very key. Health is very key. Uh, and then now, what is so important uh, in Nigeria it's technology. Uh, if you look at the, the landscape in Africa, Nigeria is actually leading in so many fronts in terms of technology, so it's good. Because this is one area that uh, perhaps do not really need too many or too much of um, formal education even. You can be in your house. Uh, in fact, I am in Kaduna at the moment interacting with you. I know in Lagos and so on and so forth. And people all over the world are listening and watching. So that's what technology does. And that, this is one important aspect that you know, Nigerians are so good at, uh, whether uh, in secondary schools, uh, the, the universities and so on, and, and people who are not even in formal education. So it's important that this Empower program is, has been expanded you know, to accommodate uh, people from all walks of life, particularly like I mentioned, technology area is very, very important. It's one thing that we need to do and do well in Nigeria, because a lot of things, like I keep saying to everyone, we do things still uh, you know, I use the phrase 1860 years. So things that are still, you know, so much archaic. So, but with technology, we can actually go out and get out of this doldrum and then we have a better society. So it's, in, uh, it's, it's very commendable for government to think towards this way. And I'm sure Nigerians will take advantage of the opportunity 
to, 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 to do well. All right, brilliantly said. We must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Mohammed um, Abdullahi, for all of um, the inputs and you know the insights that you have brought on this NPAR program. We do appreciate that. Thanks for your time. Mohammed Abdullahi is a public affairs uh, commentator and analyst. So that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Business Insight returns to your screen same time next time. Bye for now.